Hello everyone, my name is Sefo and welcome back to Nintech Engineering. This is the second lesson on Applied Thermodynamics, Power Missions and Six. And on this lesson, I want us to look at the heat transfer that takes place across the plant. We are already familiar with the structure that is in the pot. We already know that the main purpose of a steam plant is to generate electricity. We use water to achieve that process. Water is stored at the storage we call the hot wheel. It is pumped using a feed pump from the storage to the evaporator. But first, it will pass through an economizer where the first heat energy transfer will take place. This is the economizer. Water having an enthalpy of H1 pass through the economizer and come out at the other end with an enthalpy of H2. The economizer looks something like this. Fuel gases enters the economizer and it travels in this line. Has a higher temperature or a higher heat energy compared to the feed water. We know that heat will always travel from a hotter to a cold object. So as the feed water comes to contact with the line where the fuel gases are traveling, it observes the heat energy from the fuel gases and come out at the other side as H2, which is the enthalpy after the economizer. And for us to get the heat energy that was gained by the water from the economizer, we're going to say H2 minus H1. And this will give us the specific enthalpy, since we know that the SI unit of this from the steam table is kilojoules per kg. And we are going to say times the mass of the steam to get the actual amount of heat that was received by the water from the economizer. To get that, you can also use the information of the fuel gases if you are given. If you are given the temperature here and the temperature after, and you are given the specific heat capacity of the fuel gases, you are going to use the formula that says M of the fuel gases times the specific heat capacity at constant pressure since everything takes place at constant pressure here times the change in temperature and we are going to get the heat that was lost by the fuel gases and according to the law of conservation of energy we know the heat that is lost by the fuel gases is equal to the heat that is gained by the feed water. So questions might come in two ways. They might ask you to, to calculate the heat that is gained in the economizer. Know that they are referring to the heat that is gained by the feed water from the economizer. This is it. Or they might say calculate the heat that is lost in the economizer. They are referring to the heat that is lost by the fuel gases at the economizer and we know that the heat that is lost by the fuel gases is close to do the heat that is gained by the feed water so either way you can use any formula as long as you have the information but always try to use this one and then same thing will happen in the evaporator we are going to say we know from here it's h1 H2, H3, and H4. In the, economi in the economizer, it's H1, H2 minus H1. In the evaporator, it will be H3 minus H2 times the mass of the steam. This is at the evaporator. And in the superheater, it will be H4 minus H3. Mm -hmm. 
superheater. This is the heat that is gained or the heat that is lost at the evaporator. And this one is the heat that is gained or the heat that is lost at the superheater. The other component where heat is gained is at the air heater. And to calculate the heat energy that is gained, you are going to say the mass of the air that is entering here times the specific capacity of the air times say specific heat capacity times the change in temperature which will be the temperature of the air before the evaporator sorry before the air heater and the temperature of the air after the air heater this will be t2 and then from here you are going to get the heat energy that was transferred in the air heater so by now we already know that h1 is equal to hf at temperature number one temperature number one it's here the temperature of the water before the economizer and h2 it's equal to hf still at temperature number two which is the temperature of the water after the economizer h3 it's equal to h create space h3 it's equal to h wet which it's equal to hf plus h Dryness fraction times HFG. H4, it's equals to H soup, which is HG plus the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam. In brackets, T soup minus saturation temperature. This we are going to use pressure to get them. If you are given the pressure, you look for that pressure in the steam table. In that corresponding row, you extract the value of HF and the value of HFG. Even here, you are going to extract the value of HG and the value of TS. This one and this one you should be given. If you get a question where you are not given the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam, you are going to use the steam table for superheated steam where you will need the pressure and the temperature t soup to get your enthalpy you go to the steam table for superheated steam you look for the pressure that you are given and you look for the temperature that you are given where they meet you are going to extract the information that you are looking for if you are not given this and in the steam table, you get that you are given a pressure or a temperature that is not in the steam table. The specific heat capacity of superheated steam, you will use 2.093 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. But first, you must start here. If you do not have this, start here. And if you do not have this, that's where you will come to this. Don't just come to this, whereas you might find that you, you could have got your enthalpy from the superheated steam table. And that's where we are going to leave our today's lesson. I will see you on the next lesson.